This is online journalism. My name is Xavier with an X. And today we're going to talk about fairness. Fairness is a main issue in online journalism. Yep, this is lesson number five. And we're going to start right now. So, action! Okay, fairness. What is fairness? Obviously, fairness is to be fair. Okay, but let's see what is the dictionary definition of fairness. And here, here it is. Fairness is the quality of treating people equally. The quality of treating people equally. That means that in my news reports, in my articles, in my news coverage in general, I should treat all the parties involved equally, giving them the opportunity to give their point of view, give their angle, give their version, give their side of the story. Okay? Well, let's talk about a little bit about fairness. Fairness, uh, known to some like the Fairness Doctrine, was a uh, regulation that was uh, put into, introduced in 1949 by the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission in the U.S. And basically what it said is that in uh, the media you should have both sides of the story. Both, uh, you know, the, the guys that are against and the guys that are for any given issue. Okay, even though this uh, Fairness Doctrine was eliminated in 1987 for reasons that it's not of this lesson. Um, I would say that in general professional journalists always look up to have fairness in their notes, in their everyday news coverage. Okay? Let's have some examples. Let's say that uh, you're covering a story from a local restaurant that has some people very mad because they got intoxicated in the restaurant. Okay? That, that can happen more than once. And um, if you interview the guys who got intoxicated, you have only one side of the story. You have to have also the reactions of the owners of the restaurant. Okay? So you will have the pros and the cons of every news, okay? In this uh, restaurant example, uh, probably it's just uh, um, two sides of the story, but there's a lot of bigger issues, let's say gun control. Let's say there's a big issue in your state, in your community about gun control. Well, then you, you will have the people that are against guns, and the people that are in favor of owning handguns, okay? But then you will also have the possibility of interviewing uh, maybe some family that lost a loved one in a gun-related issue. You can interview the judge and how he um, thinks about this problem related to uh, recent convictions or recent uh, murders whatsoever. So you, only, you don't only have two sides of the story, you have many sides of the story. That depends, on, obviously, on, on the type of the story. So, the idea of fair, the fairness doctrine and fairness in general is that you have to give each side the same opportunity to give their version of what happened, okay? And this means a similar airtime. Obviously, you don't have to, you know, like measure it. Oh, one minute and five seconds to this guy, so I have to give one minute. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's uh, the opportunity for each to say what they think about every news item involved in your news coverage. Okay. Now, the problem is that some people don't want to speak, don't want to say something, okay? Well, I think you should try 
and try and try to get at least both sides of the story. But if you can't, and I mean, if you really can, you really call them, you really try to get hold of them, and uh, they don't want to say anything, then you have to state in that um, news report that you tried to talk to such and such restaurant manager, and you tried to lo uh, locate the owner of that uh, food chain, and the public relations department, and that you, you had no response, or that you had some response saying that they wouldn't say anything. That, that, I mean that, so that, that the uh, audience sees that you are really trying to get both sides of the story, that you are trying to be fair, okay? Because that is very important for the journalist, to be fair with himself, with the people involved in the news and with his audience, okay? Now, there are some legal stuff related to news items that are full of, 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 of legal problems. For instance, uh, a murder case, for instance, uh, a demand from the community, and you have to be very careful with your statements in your article. So you can't say that Mr. Eddie Murphy that was involved in a murder, you can't call him the murderer. You have to say the suspected murderer and say who said that. The police said that the suspected murderer is such and such and such. Because if you don't say who said that, you could be sued. Okay? So remember, first, to be fair is very important. And second, to be careful with the legal terms and don't say things that at the end can be wrong and then you're going to get sued and you're going to be okay nobody wants to get sued okay so how can you protect yourself for uh, saying the things you have to say in a way that you're safe legally speaking okay so number one you have to give the source the source of each statement that is controversial. If you're accusing someone, don't, don't say in the note that you are accusing. No, 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 you're not accusing anybody. The police is accusing. The uh, prosecutor, the um, lawyers are saying. The uh, community is saying that that restaurant has filthy food. It's not you, okay? So the source, register the source of the information. Number two, don't say definite things. Don't say the murderer. Don't say the, uh, you, you have to say the accused murderer. Even if he is, he, if he is convicted, don't say the murderer, you, you should say the convicted murderer, because that is, that word would say that you're not uh, giving that level to, to this guy as a murderer, it's the court, okay? So if you say Eddie Murphy is a convicted murderer, this is just an example, you are not going to be sued because it's uh, the court that convicted him that is saying that he is a murderer, okay? So the source, number one, not, let, let's say, not definite statements, you know, like ta-ta-ta, but use words that will protect you, like accused, like uh, convicted, like uh, uh, suspected, okay? Another thing, 
another thing is that sometimes you have or you take information from other sources that, that is not, you know, like the police department, the courts, and uh, like other newspapers. Uh, first of all, try that those, that those newspapers are, are you know, like, like solid, um, uh, recognized, uh, fair newspapers. You know, I'm, I'm talking about Washington Post, New York Times, USA Today, uh, Boston Globe, Chicago Tribune, LA Times, uh, Le Monde, Okay, so then you could say, Mr. Uh, Eddie Murphy was accused of such and such crime, stated by the New York Times report by such and such journalist on such and such date. So, this way you even though it's, it's not, you know, like an official source, you are stating who is responsible for that. Okay, so very, very important to have both sides of the stories, or even more, that in things that are um, controversial, the source is present, you, you're not blaming anybody, you know, like 100%, you're saying the suspect, the, the uh, accused, and the sources could be uh, people, could be institutions, could be other newspapers. I mean, that's okay, because you're informing, okay? In, in, um, in law, there is something that is called animus informandi in Latin, which means that you are willing or you are doing a news report about that case, okay? And if you are doing a news report, trying to inform your audience, that is your main um, idea, your main, your main purpose, okay? You are not doing that report to talk bad about Eddie Murphy in this example. So as long as it is clear that your intention is to inform your audience and not to talk bad about Eddie Murphy, in this example, you will be um, very uh, good in case of a, of a demand, in case you're sued, because you will say, no, I was informing. I, I was not talking about bad about this guy. I was informing the community of this issue with facts, and here are the facts. This is said by this, by that, but okay. Okay, another important thing about fairness. Fairness has to be in the same article, in the same newscast, in the same radio show that the other version, okay? So, it is not fair to have, let's say, um, party number one version on Monday, and the second version on Tuesday. That is not fair. Why? Because many people just heard this one, so the restaurant is going to be, uh, if you just, uh, on Monday you just say all the people that were intoxicated by this food chain, and uh, some of those people won't be listening on Tuesday when you get the reactions of the food chain. So you have to try to have that in the same day, okay, together. I am saying, as I said before, if the food chain doesn't have a statement on Monday, that's their fault. I mean, you tried to get it on Monday. If it doesn't come out on Monday, then you have to uh, put it when it comes out, obviously. But as that is not your fault. You made your effort to have it together. So, version A and version 2 and version B have to be together the same day in the same newscast in the same newspaper, okay? Okay. Another thing. Fairness has to deal with the general public, has to deal with 
a lot of uh, credibility on your, on your online journalism report, newsletter, but it also has to do with you. Because the main thing when you finish uh, and you go home after doing a, a great work on, on online journalism and by any chance you meet the actors of the news you just reported the next day or in the future, you have to have a clean face if you see them on the street, on the sidewalk, or hope not in the court. Because you de really did your best and you really reported on the news what they said, okay, equally, in a fair way. So that is very important, that you feel, after you um, put your news report, that you really feel that you did a fair job, that both sides of the story are in there. Equally, everyone said that reflects what they said, and that you're not, you know, like doing, uh, I didn't like this guy, so I'm going to diminish his side, you know, I just teeny weeny thing, you know, like this, because I didn't like him, he had bad breath. I mean, that's, that's not good online journalism, and that is not fair. Not fair for him, not fair for the audience, okay? So, try to do things in a fair way, and you will sleep very well, and you won't have problems, you won't have legal problems, and you would have a great reputation on the web, okay? Well, that's it for today. See you on the next lesson.